and it all came together really quickly. Before I knew it, I was in Australia. Oh, what a pie! That was incredible. If you were gonna go on this trip, you are gonna get worked. Oh, got him. God, just sitting there mid-water and it's a date it. In the coral, in the coral. I knew that this trip would offer the two fish that are on the top of my hit list. Number one on my list is the Napoleon wrasse. Oh, it's so cool. The other fish, the dog tooth tuna. Look at that. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Malt. I got you, what you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tunas. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there, that's what I like to see. That's the one! He's not superstitious, because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him, come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. Basically two different people who are buying boats. One is the person who wants to just go on a lot. Then there's more of the guy or girl who wants to customize their boat. We're in the process of building a boat for the West Coast. We're gonna bring this boat from Sarasota all the way out to San Diego, and that's where this boat's gonna live. And they delivered the motors. I see the motors, those yeah, are motors, them over motors there. Motors are up here, motors are here. So we're close. After spending a whole lot of time on my boat, Ali's starting to see the significance of having a center console out on the West Coast. Everything's cut out for the gauges, throttle gauges, box, steering yeah. helms. Yes. Building a custom boat is never a just drop in one day, lay everything out, and that's what you're gonna get. The first process is stopping in, picking out the colors, and picking out the layout of the boat. I like to come back when the deck's going in and the ring liner's going in. That way, I see the boat, I lay out my rod holders, where they're gonna be. I lay out my fish hole, how I want it, it's interesting to see the boats without the cap and everything on them. Right now, it's kind of a chaotic time in my life. I don't just have one boat at Andros being built. I have my charter boat there being outfitted with new Simrad electronics. And this is their latest and greatest, the new uh, transducer from Aramar. Electronics have come such a long way in the past 15 years. I can run 40 miles an hour and mark bottom in 2,000 feet of water. For me, staying on the cutting edge of new electronics is key. My bottom machine is basically my eyes under the water. So if there's anything new that I feel that could help me, give me a little bit of edge out on the water, I want it, I need it. Uh, as always, I appreciate all your help with this. Hey, no problem. Right now it's a process. Everybody knows these builds are not exactly quick, they're not easy, and there's a lot of thought that goes into them but the end result is gonna be well worth it. And it all came together really quickly, but uh, before I knew it, I was in Australia. I originally found out about the Nomad operation, gosh, it's gotta be close to almost 15 years ago. Their business really is figuring out the logistics to get people to the most remote areas of the Great Barrier Reef and giving them the opportunity to fish for some of these fish that have never seen an angler and have never seen a lure. We basically looked at where can we take people where it's sheltered, we've got reasonable protection from the weather but they can still do this sort of GT fishing and jiggings. And these outer coral sea reefs were an area where nobody was fishing, it was obviously going to have amazing fishing just from looking at the charts. I knew that was a trip that I had to do. Unfortunately for Rushy, he's stuck back in the Keys, cleaning up from the hurricane, trying to get back to normal, and keep an eye on the new boat we have being built at Andros. And there was no way I was gonna miss the opportunity. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evan Rood. Penn, let the battle begin. Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. 
the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Simrad. Go with confidence. Go with Simrad. Nomad Design. Crafted by experience. And bdoutdoors.com. There's probably been yachts passed through here or maybe the odd, you know, commercial mackerel boat anchored somewhere around here, but I seriously doubt anyone's ever thrown lures here. Wow. You know, there's 2,000 miles of reef. Just to give you an idea of where we're fishing, Australia is obviously a very big place. The Great Barrier Reef, I think, is 2,300 miles from tip to tip. We were only fishing the northernmost, remote portions of the reef. Where's your sweet spot at? It, it, usually, at usually you're looking for these like, little sort of cutaways in the reef. Like, yeah, this, this sort of like little cutaway here. Little... Somehow, I wound it up here when I had a text from Ali, and he said, I got a spot to go on the Nomad. We were literally in the Coral Sea in the middle of nowhere. And this style of fishing really lends itself to lure fishing because it's 100% surface fishing. It's basically this kind of okay. twitch the rod tip. So you want that lure kind of doing a walk the dog thing under the water and it's all right if it kind of splashes out a little bit, but. These fish are mean and they are in super shallow water. They are hell on lures. They are hell on rigging. Damn, he ate it. God. Just trying to show how to work the lure here and we're, awesome. we're on straight away. That is a mad scad with a coral trout. Oh. <laughs> and they're hard on hooks and they're caught in really shallow water. So you guys call that a trout, but that's actually a grouper, right? Yeah, so they, they com that's actually called a passion fruit trout locally. It's a different coloration to the normal ones, but beautiful fish, aren't they? Just this, you know, the blue spots. So what that means is having these toothy, strong fish and shallow water. You need to be able to turn that fish immediately, put a lot of pressure to it, and you need a lure that can stand up to that. Oh, trout! Got him! <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome! That was, what a take! The visual on that He just charged in and ate it at the boat. <laughs> Oh, that's go. Such an awesome nice work, man. Fish, that's awesome. Man. Good start. So there it's just go, unlike anything we've got, man. It's so cool. It's beautiful. And the teeth on them, they're just savage. Yeah, the guys on Nomad, they definitely know lures. When we were there, I think we fished for six or seven days. We did not use bait once. There he is. Uh -oh. A little trout. Another trout. <laughs> it's unusual to catch this many of the. Yeah, it is. It was strictly a lure fishery. That's what these guys thrive on. This is so similar to that grouper fishing we do in Mexico. It's my really? favorite kind of fishing. <laughs> Watch them come up out of the rocks and try to stop them. And, and they go through them, man. In a bad day on the Nomad, you could lose a dozen or 15 lures. Oh, oh got big. him. Nice. Oh, palm him, yep. Pull him out of that reef. Go, go, go. He's got you in the reef. Oh, I'm in now. Should I let him swim or pull? Oh, I'll try and drive over there. Hang on. Hold on. Freeze pull him or? Uh, yeah, try and try and pull him out. You can give him a little bit of give him a little bit of slack line, but usually once they're in there, it's game over, over to be honest. Uh, there you go. Give it, get into him. Oh, he's cut you off in the reef. You need a quality lure that can handle that kind of punishment. I don't know what it was. Big and dark. Yeah, it was a ras. Oh, it was a ras. Yeah, that was a ras. It wasn't huge. It was like uh, that big enough to do the damage. I can tell you what it was. It was $20. <laughs> <laughs> Did I mention Damon's in the lure business? <laughs> Probably started with my father. There's photos of me kind of age like two strapped to his back fishing in the surf on Stradbroke Island. So I was kind of uh, doomed from an early age. <laughs> I think I've got a coral trout here. Not. Yeah, they will, they will eat these big poppers, those coral trout. Really liking that. Uh surface splash there. Kind of developed a love for fishing and I guess it never went away. Went to college, did an engineering degree, worked in that for a little bit and then really just decided I needed to uh, needed to go fishing and that's kind of where the uh, the charter operation started from I guess in a nutshell. Ooh, bigger trout. Here we go. Big old trout. A oh, darker color. Look at that guy. Oh, nice trout. Oh, nice. look at that. The charter operation started from a, obviously a desire to want to kind of take people fishing and we, we started with a lot smaller boats and in different areas and ended up uh, building this uh, big mothership and 
kind of doing these trips out to the middle of middle of the Coral Sea in the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, you got him, you got him. I think that might be, a, is that a trout or a GT? Well, when we first started doing charters, we got into the, the lure and tackle side of things because there wasn't really any tackle in Australia to do this kind of GT fishing and jigging. Got there, a little trout. A little trout. Nice. Another one, wow. Keep it out of your mouth. these guys. Excited there. Ever since I was a kid, I've just really loved making lures, thinking about things, and I guess with a bit of a sort of engineering background, kind of got into it many, many years ago. We really started looking at this probably in 2010. How do we make lures that are just super, super tough and can stand up to the fishing out here? That was really what drove us to, to get involved in this because a lot of the tackle that we were using just couldn't stand up to the type of fish that are out here. They're just super tough, big fish. Whoa, there we go. There you go. Stuff breaks all the time. You've got charter customers that are like, oh man, all this stuff's breaking. What, what are we gonna use? So that really inspired us to start looking at making our own range of tackle. Oh, there he is. Wow. Oh. It does look just like a kingfish. Yeah. Listen to him crunching that lure. <laughs> He's just crunch, crunch. He is pissed. <laughs>going to head about 25 miles over to the east so Odyssey's going to go and meet us this evening at uh, a reef that we've never fished before actually so uh, this whole area is all new so. Damon is a lot like myself the guy's just a fishing nerd he loves to fish. So we got the current just really running into the front edge of this shoal so we're sort of running up this reef here and I'm looking for where the current's really funneling between these two reefs. He's just obsessed with fishing the sport of fishing the culture of fishing. Incredible. That was amazing. That was like... Come up. Oh, there's a shark on him, oh dear. Oh, oh another oh, one. Oh, look at the shark on him. Look at the shark. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. Oh, the sharks have got him. Oh, my gosh. That was mental. Right, I don't so, like this guy's chances. No. Oh, man. Let's bring him in here. Oh, man. Oh. There's sharks on the Great Barrier Reef? Yeah, just a couple. I didn't know. Oh, really just wanted to get that lure back. <laughs> Look at these things, they're going Holy nuts in here. Holy moly. If you were gonna go on this trip, like if a buddy came up to me and asked me for advice, the first thing I'd say is get in shape. You are gonna get worked. You're gonna throw a lure 300 to 500 times a day, and you still have to have the energy between casts to stop these fish, land them. Oh, got him. Get him out off that shallow stuff. We don't need him busting us off there. He's gonna be a blind trout. Get his head up. Just one of the little emperors that you get on the reef. Oh, oh GTs! Oh, oh man. He got him. That was insane. Oh! <laughs> need a bobber and a night crawler. <laughs> My arm's getting tired. I'm a little fidgety as a person. I can't sit still. So making a lot of casts. Oh, he's gonna eat it, he's gonna eat it! Oh, get it, get it, get it! Having a lot of opportunities really keeps me in the game. The two of them, that's why I thought it was so big. I see that every day. One of the cool things about this trip is just catching stuff that you've never seen before. Look at that! Well, that's a new species. That's a big red bass. I mean, just weird, weird stuff. Some of it looking similar to what we've caught at home or in Florida or whatever, and some of it looked nothing like a fish you'd ever seen before. Oh, there it is! <laughs> Had to happen. He just ate that. Get him out of that coral. Come on, baby, get up, get up. You want me to stop him a little bit? No, no, I think he's coming up there where... Oh, he's gone down there off the edge, that's good. Just sucked it down off the surface there. You're doing well there. That's it. Oh, just, just hooked. I've seen pictures of GTs, giant trevally being caught all around the world, you know, Hawaii, Indonesia, uh, all the tropical Pacific oh, waters seem to have very them. Nice. This place makes you believe in the GT, whether you want to or not. 
Chuck Norris, aka Big Poppy. There it is. Good job, man. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck That's Norris. awesome. Big Poppy. Did the job. You worked for him. This fish is a bad mother. They pull really hard. They've got a smashing strike. Just another badass Australian fish. I brought you a little jacket because it might be a little cold on the way out. Basically, I couldn't make it on the Australia trip. The timing wasn't right. How's everything else been? I just got some Gatorades in there for him. Yeah, I have a lot of people in the fishing industry. I know the best of the best when it comes to guides. There's a flats guide down here. He, he goes by the name of Little Stevie or the Little Ninja. Whenever we get the invite to go out with Little Stevie, we take it. Little Wim, it's a pretty day. My son, he's been on the boat and fishing with me since he's been in diapers, basically. Pull it out like this, nice and slowly, till we get it back where we want it, and then we're gonna lock it up. And if you hold it, just hold it like this, okay? My son now, he's at the age where he's my sidekick. Wherever I go, he goes. If a fish hits it, you don't want it to backlash, right? So you gotta be able to slow down from coming off the pool really fast. Never wanna push being a fisherman on, on my son or, or my daughter, for that matter. I would want them to be drawn to it naturally. And obviously, Cade loves it. Every weekend, that's all he wants. He wants me to take him in the boat. Good <laughs> job. He came back and ate that other half, huh? Yeah. So come around this way. Black tip. Keep reeling right to about there. Just hold them. Stevie will de-hook them for you. Goodbye. Whether catching a, a slam on the boat or catching nothing, just spending the day on the water with my son is a great day. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Andro's Boatworks. Adventure never ends. Must add hooks. Defining fishing hooks since 1877. AFTCO, the American fishing tackle company. Costa, see what's out there. Sea Keeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. Fleer, the world's sixth sense. And by Casa Vieja Lodge. Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. I knew that this trip would offer the two fish that are on the top of my hit list. They're both kind of exotic. You only find them in really tropical waters. Number one on my list is the Napoleon wrasse. Yeah, that little sort of sandy patches in the middle there. They love that sort of stuff. Pulling them out's another matter, but in the coral, in the coral. If you don't know what a Napoleon wrasse is, maybe you've been browsing online or whatever, it is this giant blue and green rubber-lipped monster. It's right here, right here. Stop the boat, stop the boat. There's your ass. Oh, it's a Napoleon. Awesome. One of the most unique fish in the ocean. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's so cool. Check the color on that. Well done, man. There's your wow, first one. Wow, that's a good one to start with. That's a nice one to start with. You did well to get him out of the coral there. It's the color on those things is just spectacular. There's not much else that looks that good, is it? And they come in like 10 different color phases. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, they're a really cool fish. Go ahead and let this guy go. Send him home. Oh, see you later, dude. Thanks for the fight. He's off. <laughs> Just sitting down there. Right to the bottom. Well done, man, congratulations. Thank you. The other fish that's been number two on my list for a long, long time is the dog tooth tuna. Oh, he almost got laying out. Oh no, that could still be. The right guy. I've never seen one, never had the opportunity to catch one. Bump it in gear just a touch, Damon. Yep. GT, one, two. Come on. Down deep to tell. That's a doggy. Yeah, you got a doggy. Oh, sweet. Oh, oh he's not yes. bad. Right All right. Sweet. Yes. Oh, Look at that. That's a nice one. That's a good, 
good fish, man. Check the teeth on this thing. Dude, you have no idea what a tuna nerd I am, how cool it is to see one. All right. Woo. Oh, there it is. That's oh, a nice fish, right man. On. Oh. You're gonna be able to hold him up. You got your dog teeth there, mate. Man, this That's is awesome. a bucket list <laughs> fish for me. I mean, yeah. what did I tell you when we started talking about this trip? He said, I want to catch a dog tooth tuna and a wrasse. Unbelievable, the power. They're incredible, just aren't they? so strong. Yeah. This thing is just a straight little butterball, man. Well, I mean, you saw the drag we had on there. I mean, we have that drag set for like real big fish. We got, you know, 40, 50 pounds of drag on there. And, and he's still taking this it. This fish has taken 40, 50 pounds of drag. I really came to Australia with a few fish I wanted to catch. Very nice. All right, we'll get him in the uh, Hold ice box and... Try it again. That was a Napoleon ras and the dog tooth tuna. You know, I really feel like I accomplished my dog tooth tuna mission. I got a really nice, respectable fish. And then the other one was Napoleon ras. I caught one. Yeah. It was a smaller one. Wasn't the one I was looking for, uh -huh. but it gives me all the reason to come back. This was an absolutely awesome trip. You know, I come home, people are like, how was Australia? I, I can only say it was the best fishing trip I've ever done. And, and I've been fortunate to fish in a lot of places, but this was hands down the most unique remote destination with the most unique fishery I've ever seen. And I can't wait to bring Rush and the whole crew down there and really show them what this place has to offer.